Uh, I was in the band Neverfall, and I worked with a band called Shockwave. All right. Uh, what, um, what year did, uh, did you hop in the scene? Uh, I started in 94, 95, uh, ending my high school years, and just kind of finding something new and exciting. Um, all the music stuff started coming out. Um, there was a big shift in what was getting popular and everything. Uh, one of my best friends, uh, Dan, just found this Integrity CD, and that kind of did it for both of us. Uh, Brothers Keeper is really big, Abnegation, those guys <clears throat> all started playing more out of town shows and setting up these little networks of friends and other bands. So they're branching out and going across the country and bringing bands in. Um, Brothers Keeper goes to Europe <clears throat> at this point, which is, to all of us, was ginormous. Like, wow, our friends can actually go and, and do things and play out. So <clears throat> that's kind of the state. And then it starts a U.S. tour, and it spawns a whole other breed of bands, um, Digression, Disciple, from Erie, who started playing Erie shows and building up, you know, following and then starting to branch out in Tri-State area. We're in a unique uh, location. We're Detroit, uh, Buffalo, Cleveland. Everything's like right, we're right in the middle of it all. So <laughs> anybody passing through that's playing one of the bigger uh, cities, playing in Cleveland or playing in Indianapolis, they want to stop off in here. So we have a lot of people coming in and out. So we were a nice little hub for, you know, the eastern part of the country. That was... Well, it started, my first show was at a boys and girls hall, um, and then there was Continental Ballroom, which I'm sure everybody's talked about, um, really historic for us. Uh, IQ Records, uh, moving out into Edinburgh when um, Forward Hall shut down, that was another place. So, you know, we just kind of found different places we could get into, little hotels and little rooms and ballrooms, anybody that would let us book a show, we'd book at Perry Highway Hose. Um, you know, there's bingo one night, and then there's despair playing the next. So anytime there was an opportunity, we just took it and booked shows there. Uh, Neverfall uh, started with a bunch of younger kids. I wasn't in the band originally. It was a bunch of kids that went to elementary school together and started playing. And that was <clears throat> formed after BK had gone out and started playing. Um, I think Abnegation kind of stopped playing shows at this point. This is when Disciple kind of took over and started going out nationally. And Digression started playing more shows. Um, you know, all these kids started in this little little part of Erie called Harbor Creek, which is a little eastern town. And those kids had all known each other. Well, their singer, they got rid of him, whatever, and gave me a call. So kind of took over from there. Um, and then off of that, we did a split with Disciple that went out. And then uh, our friend Chris Logan, <coughs> who's in a band called Chokehold, um, put up this awesome comp and he saw us play the one night and said, you guys have a song? So we put a song on that comp and that was huge for us. That got us a lot of exposure and then turned into shows and other recording. And then uh, our friend Matt in Cleveland um, from Chocolate had a label called Shandle and asked if we wanted to do an EP so we put six songs. How, how long did that uh, run go for? Uh, to about 2000. So a good six years. Uh, well, Shockwave, what I can tell you is it started as a bunch of friends hanging out and wanting to do something low-key, uh, something fun, something with no agenda behind it, um, you know, the agenda being Transformers and G.I. Joe. <laughs> that's, that's, that and friendship, I can tell you, are the motivating forces behind the band. As far as the lineup goes, can't tell you, I communicate with everybody via email, and that's how everything is kind of transferred back and forth. And I know when uh, when the 7 inch came out on SA Mob, I know there was a lot of communication via email, some sketchy drops that had to be made, and lockers and stuff. It was a whole deal. I realize all the band members are on Cybertron and everything, but could you tell us like how the crowd responded wherever you went and played? Well, I can't confirm or deny being a part of that, so I can't say how they responded to me, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what I can tell you is uh, every show was an event, um, especially in Erie, a hometown show. Uh, for some reason, everybody picked, Shockwave picked that area um, to grace the presence, you know? Um, so that's kind of the home base for the band. Uh, every time, you know, they picked and chose what shows they want to play, when they want to play, turned into Halloween, and then um, 
make it an annual event. All those shows got really big because they were promoted really well. Uh, good support bands, and it was a big collaborative. Everybody worked for that. Uh, audiences loved it. The uh, band loved it even more. Um, and never did a U.S. tour. A couple of out-of-state performances, but a European tour, oddly enough. Um, signed with uh, Good Life for a record and uh, got to go over to Europe. I can't answer that. What I can tell you from my personal experiences, um, Mike Ski was an integral part of everything, and he's a humble guy. He won't, he won't talk about that, but what I can tell you is Mike laid a lot of the groundwork, along with other people at Giggy, um, that were around before my time, that laid this great foundation and never let up. They didn't take their foot off the neck. They just kept going and going. And that branched out into relationships all over. Everybody knew Erie, Pennsylvania, and everybody wanted to play in Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, you know, those bands that went out and worked always rep the city and always, you know, welcomed people in. You had you had smaller bands coming from Maryland or Texas or wherever, and Erie was unique in that it didn't matter where you were from and what your band sounded like and what your agenda was and what your theme was. People were watching you, which is, from my experience of going out of town shows, one of those things that's very unique. People, you know, they'll watch the, the headliner band or the local band, but the other bands that are touring or whatever just kind of sit off the side. But uh, people in here are very loyal and very welcoming. They would spend money on demos, um, eight bucks on a t-shirt, whatever, just for seeing a band, you know, play a half hour set. There's a lot of support in that city. Uh, Pittsburgh's a big city. Uh, I know Neverfall played there one time, actually twice. Once at Club Lago, which was, which is fantastic. It was a metal festival, and there were a lot of people that were into metal, um, not so much you know, old hardcore. But later on, we played in uh, some industrial park in Pittsburgh, the Cold as Life, which was amazing. You know, um, and and just to see icons and play with them, and you know, there's only like 50, 75 people to show. And we're like, what's going on right now? You know, this is amazing. But um, Pittsburgh was kind of hit or miss for a while. Um, you'd, you'd go to see some band in a little place, and you'd have a huge turnout. And then sometimes you go see a national act, and 50 people. <laughs> I, I guess the one thing, if I wanted to take out of this and and just relay, is just how fair everybody was and how supportive everybody was. Like I said, if you were a smaller band and you needed a show, we got you a show. Traveling bands always got paid well and got paid first. You know, for us to load up our gear and play a mile away, it's not gonna, it's not about money to us, you know? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And there was always a rotation, and that's one thing, you know, we had this, I don't say chain of command, but it's, it's the way we worked it. Um, you know, whatever band had something coming out, a release, or if somebody was going on a tour, or in the middle of a tour, it was their show for that month. So, <clears throat> you know, for example, say Brothers Keeper, they were going on a tour. So they would pick their Erie date, set up shows with who they're supporting, and whoever else they wanted to play, or who else needed a show, and they would play. You know, the next month or two months later, it might be Disciple, it might be Neverfall, it might be Shockwave for release. And, and that's kind of how we worked that, so nobody got burned out, and everybody supported everybody. That was a big thing. Um, everybody was taken care of. Uh, everybody, it's not uncommon for everybody to crew up and go to a mall, or go to John's in Edinburgh, or wherever, in you know, our blue windbreakers and hand out hundreds of flyers and just plaster them all. And everybody did that. And you would go to all these little villes and bergs and hand out flyers everywhere. So that's what we always had good shows. Everybody bought into it and everybody was part of the whole process. It was a big deal.